Hi guys, welcome back. So today I thought I should take you through something really, really fundamental and it's something everyone struggles with. How do you plan an essay? So many people, so many students come in and tell me, oh well, I kind of read everything and then I just start writing and I panic and I wanna get it done and I just write straight away. Everybody has a different method. If that does really work for you and that's got you good marks, then by all means, carry on. But you're making drafting really, really difficult. So today I'm just gonna take you through some of the fundamentals of essay planning for your typical two, two and a half thousand word essay. Okay, number one, planning should be part of the research process. So if you have a question set to you, such as say, what makes the Aeneid? Augustan or what makes the Aeneid an Augustan epic, okay? You need to unpick those key parts of the question and think about selecting material. That is the first part of a plan. For a 2000 word essay at undergraduate level, you have to be selective. It's slightly different if you're doing a literature essay to a history essay. So for now, let's focus on a literature example and use the Aeneid because most people are studying it or are gonna have to study it at some point. Okay, so when you're selecting material, focus on the, the points in the book, the examples that you think best evidence the question. Sounds pretty easy, right? Fine and fair enough. And at this point, a lot of people will start by going through lecture notes or maybe doing spider diagrams and it starts to look like a bit of a crazy, crazy murder board. Now, the gold standard of essay plan is an essay plan where you could actually just hand it to somebody else and they could write the essay. That's how much information you want to have. Should it be going over the word count of the essay? Absolutely not. But it should be a really clear map by the time you start drafting. So that really, if you could give it someone else and they could write the essay, you've done a good job. So you take it from your spider diagram. So here, hopefully on the screen, you can see the example of what makes the Aeneid Augustan. So there are different areas for inquiry here. You might be thinking first of all about um, Augustan anachronisms. So when, when we're reading the Aeneid, do we see little moments of Augustan history shoehorned into this historic past? You might think about Augustan values and women, the role of women in the Aeneid. And you might think about Aeneas as a sort of proto-Augustan or pro-Augustan hero, okay? okay. So when you circle off and you exclude your essay to those areas, what you then need to do is think about what order they would go in. Why? That will avoid you repeating yourself when you are drafting. So if you go from a spider diagram, often you'll get feedback in your essays, oh, this is quite repetitive, or your argument jumps around quite a lot. If you have a linear plan in the first place, it will help you structure your essay. And it will help signpost when you're writing your introduction exactly what you're going to be looking at and why. That's another important thing about selecting your material. Tell the marker why those episodes, why the material you've picked so important. How does that help evidence your argument when you're choosing to respond to this question? Why else is planning important? Well, you've got your bullet point of plan and you're thinking, okay, maybe I'm ready to draft. But if you do that plan nice and early, what you can actually do is make the research bit of your essay a lot, lot easier. Having a clear idea what you think, what primary material you're going to include. And when I say primary material, I mean ancient sources. If you're writing about the Aeneid, it's gonna be the Aeneid. If you're doing a history module, it could be Thucydides or it could be an ancient vase or something from the time. If you have them already, you set them up in a bullet pointed list and you have a really clear idea of what you think. Reading and research is so much easier. What you don't want to do, or what I wouldn't recommend that you do, is read lots and lots of material before you had at least a fair idea of what you're going to cover and what you really think about it. That's not to say you can't tweak and change as you read, but if you're going with no idea at all, you really tend to panic and just read for brownie points. Just read to feel good and feel like, oh look, I've done lots of reading. You're not gonna really make that work for you in your essay when you draft because you're not gonna have opinions about what secondary material says. And when I say secondary material, I mean journal articles, I mean books that are about the period that give modern scholars opinions about what they think happened in the text or what they think happened in that period. So have your plan and then I would think about doing a bibliography, finding some material. 
Now I'll do a separate video on how to find material and how to optimize the way that you search for it. But if you knew already when you came to find your material for your Aeneid essay, hey, do you know what? I'm gonna do a section on women. It makes searching for things that are relevant so, so much easier. So you've got this kind of funneling system from spider diagram, having a nice clear bullet pointed list with the primary evidence and then having a list of the secondary that you're going to read. If you are struggling to tell the difference between primary and secondary sources, primary being from the period, something ancient, secondary being an opinion on that, colour code them. This sounds perhaps a bit patronising, but often when essays come in as drafts, if you have done a lot of reading, your essay can really lack primary evidence. That is one of the criteria for the T1 and the first class marks. Don't lack primary evidence because you've been citing other people's opinions. Their opinions are absolutely that, opinion, and you should have something to back up whether you agree or disagree with that person. And again, I'll do another video on the kind of fine tuning of how to agree and disagree and integrate these opinions. But for now, let's just focus on the plan. So what you should be left with is something that looks a little bit like what's on the screen now. And that will be bullet pointed list, a clear indication that in every section you have some primary evidence and you have some secondary material, some opinion that you're going to talk about, you're going to disagree or agree with based on your understanding of the primary evidence, okay? Nice, orderly, and already when you're drafting, you've eliminated that anxiety. No more panic because you know what you're going to be talking about at each point. But ultimately, you've made drafting so much easier. Okay, I hope the example on the screen was really helpful for you and hope you can see how this kind of planning will guide you to the 2-1 and first class grade criteria. They include things like an assured use of primary evidence, engagement with secondary material. And if you ask your lecturers, they'll probably say there is no magic number of secondary critics to read, okay? But what you can aim for is coverage. So you know that you've read someone for every different theme in the essay and that you've engaged with them throughout. You know from your plan that you've got a bit of primary for every point that you want to make. So by planning like this, you've set yourself up for a really successful draft. Okay, give it a try and let me know how you get on and I hope that was helpful. Um, I'll see you next time for thinking a little bit more about planning bigger pieces of work. So maybe thinking about dissertations and how we'll scale this stuff up. Okay guys, good luck.